Aaron Murphy, Premier Sports commentator, thanks for joining us. Um, you were in Dundee last week. You're going to Fife this week. You've done some CHL. We can't keep you away at the moment, can we? It's been busy times, but I, first off, thanks for having me on, Luke. I, I think it's, it's nice because if you look back to the last 18 months and if someone said to you when we were kind of all hunkered down and not allowed to go anywhere or do anything, if someone said, Could you, would you rather be ultra busy and in airports at five in the morning and all that, I would have bitten their arm off. So I, I'm not complaining. It has been busy, but it has been fun. And there's been a lot of talking points. Um, I mean, it's the one thing about the, the Premier Sports Elite League. It's always interesting, isn't it? And, and the Champions Hockey League last night, I mean, for London, don't mess around. I mean, you would not want to face them shorthanded. You talk about Dundee being shorthanded against Belfast. How about poor Adler Mannheim last night? So, look, it, it's been fun. And even when it's a 10-1 game like that for, for London last night, you try and make it interesting. Well, we saw them up close, didn't we, for London, just while we we're on them, um, in Cardiff a couple of years ago. And they, they came in and they, they, you see, they don't mess about, even if they only needed a draw or something proceeding. Those guys do not mess about. They play the same way every time. And, and Roger Romberg, I mean, it's, it's, it's the way to knock it into bad habits. They could have looked at the roster for Adler Mannheim last night. And, and make no doubt about it, if they're full strength, they're a very good team, Adler Mannheim and Cardiff know all about that. But with the five or six guys out with COVID, another couple of guys uh, not able to go, Frolanda could have said, look, we can come in here and win by a couple and then we go home on aggregate. They just played the same way. They didn't even look at the roster sheet. And that keeps you from getting into bad habits. So, I mean, that's why Roger Ronberg has won so many titles, whether it be the SHL or the, or the Champions Hockey League. For London marching, it doesn't matter who's in the lineup or who they're facing. They play the same way and it's ruthless and uh, – it's kind of the uh, the skate blade on the neck mentality, and they certainly put a beating down on Adler Mannheim last night. Which hopefully Adler Mannheim will be okay with the you know the COVID situation, all that. It's not always about hockey. There's some guys that aren't well there, so hopefully things turn around there. But yeah, for London last night looked uh, very much the defending champions, albeit a year removed. So we'll have to ask Paul Lady on uh, Sunday how you coach a team back from ten one aggregate down. But moving to the uh, back to the I don't Premier think you say team. much. You don't say much. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned a little bit ago there about 5 a.m. at airports. So let's just talk about your game day. We'll come to the what, everything else before, but the game day itself, right? Because you're coming from Dublin. Yeah. And so is it, it really, what time are you waking up for a 5.30 game? Uh, I mean, look, again, I'm, I'm not complaining. I don't want anyone to feel sorry, but it is it is a bit crazy right now because a couple of airlines have taken routes off. A couple of airlines like Flybe aren't available. Like, so it's hard to get to Cardiff, for example. Um, but for these Scot Scotland trips, the guys have it worse than me and Caitlin. They actually had to go up on Saturday and the Saturday flights aren't great either. So they're getting up at like four and five in the morning. They're flying up and they're, they're kind of waiting to check into a hotel. And then the game is not till Sunday. But for me, last week going to Dundee, I flew into Edinburgh at six. So I was I was up at four. You're at the airport by five. Again, you can't get into a hotel till about two or three, but that doesn't matter because our call time was one. It was an earlier start time. So you, you do have a little bit of a laborious trek to some, some places, and that's no one's fault. Like I said, some airlines uh, haven't survived uh, certain routes after the pandemic. Uh, it used to be much easier. I don't remember a time in the past where Chris or Paul had to go a day early for a game um, and sit around the hotel lobby hoping to get a room. Um, but yeah, it, it is early, uh, up at 4 a.m. And certainly by the time you go to ear, sometimes you're wondering what day is it and who's playing and all that. But plenty of caffeine. Um, Tim Hortons in Manchester was a godsend. But we uh, <laughs> look once we get to the rink too, though, all that fatigue goes away. It's like the old adage, the bus legs or the sea legs from Belfast, the ferry legs. It's there a little bit, but I think that once, once you're live on air, the fun and the game starts to take over, a bit of adrenaline kicks in. But there have been a few games early on where I've been fighting, uh, fighting a little bit of fatigue. And so we know that players, you know, that they might have their morning routines with their massages and stuff. And a lot of them take a nap in the afternoon and then they kind of come in game ready. What are you doing, for, let's say, T minus four hours? Or you said your call time was at one there. Yeah, I mean, we do some pre-records, some coach interviews. We go and talk to the coaches and see if there's anything we need to know. Like player A isn't able to go, but, you know, it's not really known yet. It'll be a game time decision or a warm up decision. So there's always those conversations that have to happen in my mind. I don't like to go blind. I mean, I know a lot of the stuff is online and you, you guys do such a great job with stats 
and the behind the back door stuff with lineups and all that. But I like to go talk to the coach. I like to talk to some of the players. It's always good to talk to the captain of Jonathan Phillips, for example. You can gauge the mood of the team. So about four hours before faceoff, we do our, our production meeting because the players aren't there yet. The coach isn't even probably there. They're four hours before. We make sure that our comms position is okay. We make sure that everything is working. Um, so there's quite a lot of admin, I guess, that happens four hours out. About two and a half hours before players start to show up, and that's when we kind of go down. And we don't like to be around them too much. We want them to get on with their routine as well. But we do have to go down and kind of put a face in and say, hey, what's what's going on, Pash or Kiefer? And we take it from there. It's always good to talk to the equipment managers as well. They'll tell you some, some funny stories and you might get something about a guy trying out a new stick or something like that. So we'll talk to the like a TAF uh, last week. But I mean, there's just a lot. Once you get to the rink, it starts to happen. And I always say to Paul and Chris or Caitlin on the day, I can't believe it's a half hour to ear. I feel like we had four hours and now we're down to, to 30 minutes. And you always try and, and eat at some point in there too, especially if you've been up since four in the morning. So, I mean, the routines vary in the buildings too. Like for example, December 5th, I'm really looking forward to getting to Glasgow for various reasons, but if you've not been to Glasgow, it's in the mall there and there's great restaurants and there's great sort of, you can have a little decompression for a half hour. If you get a break, you can go and have a bite to eat in, in a restaurant. Um, so we, we try and get in, but, but there's a lot of time in the truck as well, going over things. And I always have ideas and crazy things I want to do. I'm sure I drive Ben and the production guys crazy. But yeah, I'm always surprised by how quickly four hours goes when, once you get to the rink. And then um, I've, I've seen you turning up on game days. You don't come empty handed. You have a very colorful notebook, very large, colorful notebook with everything. <laughs> how does your, um, when does your pregame uh, prep start? And what kind of sources are you taking for what you're going to use on the air? I mean, look, it's, it's one of those ones that, like, when I fly back on a Monday, I don't want to look at hockey or talk about hockey. So I probably, Tuesday, I'll go, okay, Fife, Cardiff. I'll, I'll get a few things together. Wednesday is full-on prep mode and stats and looking at things. And um, Thursday's a big day because that's when you start to fill out a lot of bio stuff as well. And even today, I'm looking at, there's a couple of guys, Lamon for Cardiff, and I believe Anderson on Fife. They would have played together at Mercyhurst College. So you're looking at things looking for storylines, um, but Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday are very busy. And then I'm on the phone with Ben Montgomery, the producer, because I want this graphic and I want that and I want a drone camera and I want a crane camera. And most of these things are ignored because of budget. But I, I, I think that Wednesday, Thursday are, are full on. And you mentioned the notebook. I mean, uh, you know, like I, I, I posted some of these things online before, um, I think I gave away a few from GB beat in France as well, but like we have folders and folders of files and like we've done Cardiff a few times at this point in the champions league. Uh, I look at him and go, okay, Valdix isn't with them anymore. Now he's with Sheffield. So I have to, to change that. And so you just have files and files. I think I get made fun of a little bit for still writing things out, but I feel like when I write things out, I remember it like the mercy Hearst college thing will probably stick in my head. Cause I've written it out rather than just having spreadsheets. But I have to thank you guys, because whether it's time on ice or the, the back door with the shots on goal and the face-offs that we can access in-game, the time on ice tells the story itself, doesn't it? Because you look at a guy like Register this Sunday, you look at the Champions League, he was playing over 30 minutes in the Champions Hockey League. I'm going to have to look at his time on ice stats uh, for the Elite League and the Challenge Cup as well. But that tells a story for, for a fan going, God, he plays half the game, this guy. I don't know much about Cardiff, but now I, I like watching this guy, so... Yeah, I have to thank you guys. I mean, you and Hicksie do a great job. The stats and, and the availability of stats have certainly come a long way. And uh, that makes our job easier when we're putting together folders and colored, color coordinated handwritten sheets like the 80s. Talking of making your job easier, the last thing, because I know you've been a fan of this from when it was happening a couple of seasons ago, miking up the refs. Yes. How useful is this, not just to listen in, but I mean, for you and, and Paul to sometimes, you know, things happen in games and you're not quite sure and actually being able to go in, like, do you also sometimes hear stuff that the public don't hear or are you only hearing what is on the broadcast itself? Yeah, great question. And so I, one of the things we love is access, right? And whether it's the, the Maple Leafs, uh, on, on Prime TV or all these behind the scenes things, roads to the Winter Classic, we've all been exposed to those things. So just to give uh, fans a little bit of an idea. So I have a, a dial that I can turn up and I can hear the referees even when he's not on air. 
So I can hear those questions. I can hear the captain. I can hear Jonathan Phillips or uh, Richardson going over to the referee and saying, look, that's, that's got to stop. Like he's, he's holding our guy every time. So I can kind of, I, you know, it's good. I can hear the conversations, but he, that, that might not be on air until there's actually something to discuss. So like we saw it with the Haas situation, we heard Pavel Halas and the guys discussing with the captains, but that was on air. So everyone heard that, but I was hearing stuff that you might not have heard on the television broadcast. So that's very helpful. That's something that, yeah, like we did it a few years ago on free sports. So I was adamant. I know I joke about drone cameras and flyover cameras and, and <laughs> the inability to maybe do that at this point, but the, the referees, Mike was something that I was adamant. We, we had to have, and everyone agreed it, it worked really well on free sports. And we've, we've had some good ones. Haven't we? You look back to that uh, Sheffield game, uh, that was a really cool one where Jonathan Phillips is having a discussion with the referee and you see the hockey acumen and IQ of Jonathan Phillips, also the referees and how they deal with it. And then if you look at uh, Dundee Belfast, you see how something that is, well, it was pretty egregious. You see how that Haas situation was dealt with. I mean, we all saw it, but it's good to see what the referees and the, and the captains are talking about. So I love that behind the access. And I, I was talking to the producer a few days ago. I'm like, I want to do the pregame show from the bench. I want to do the pregame show on the ice in warm up with cones around us. And he's like, well, someone will shoot a puck at you. And I'm like, well, that'll make it all the better. So I believe that all access stuff is, <laughs> is key. I don't know if that'll be possible with health and safety, but I certainly in, in, in one broadcast, I want to do the, instead of being in a dressing room for that first five or six minutes of the show in the pregame show, I want to be on the ice or on a bench with no protection during a warm-up. So we'll see if they let me, I, maybe Paul Lady won't want to do it, but I, I'm certainly going to push it. So he will be there for your protection. No, no, it's just great, the, the on ice with the refs. And we've had it in the CHL with the coaches as well. That gives an even, another completely different insight what they're saying in power breaks or timeouts and stuff. So I'm sure that's something we're going to look at. Uh, well, no, and, and I, I actually, I look at, you know, like the new NHL deal with ESPN and TNT and all the things like, but NBC had a two, like someone like Pierre Maguire actually going to a coach during a period and saying, oh, you killed off a five on three. Da, da, da. Like, I, I, I want that sort of access. I mean, we needed to get the show to a, a point. We had uh, a few things we wanted to try, but you can't try it all at once because you've got to get to a situation where everyone's happy. But I'd love to talk to both Dutes and Scaldi live in play this week, whether or not they'd, they'd like to do it. We probably can't do it this week. But like I said, I throw ideas at, at the guys and I think it drives them a bit crazy. But I think it, it, it kind of jogs their creative brain, too, because if you're a TV producer or director, you want to you want it to be as best to, as it can be as well. Aaron, thanks a lot for joining us, giving us a bit of an insight into what goes into your game day. We're going to see you on Sunday in Fife live against the Cardiff Devils. The free first month of free, free sports, sorry, of Premier Sports access is still there. You can sign up, check out your team websites and social media for those access codes. And we will hear you live on air at half past five this weekend. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it.